Hello everybody and welcome back to Advanced Maths. Today's video is an introduction to cast diagrams. So, before we begin, you should know your sin, cos and tan graphs. This is what today's video is entirely about. So if you're not familiar with those already, I would recommend watching my video on sin, cos and tan graphs, which I will link in the description below. If you're happy with that, let's continue. So consider the equation sine of x is 0.5. What is the value of x? Well, the first thing we do is write sine of x is 0.5, and we take the inverse of uh, sine, and we get sine to minus 1 of 0.5 is x, which gives us 30 degrees. And so, on a graph, this makes sense, because I can see a clear solution at 30 degrees there. This is definitely a solution, but some of you might have spotted another solution. There is another solution here where the sine graph also crosses the line 0.5. And so we're trying to find that solution. And what I can see is that there are some, there's some symmetry here across the hump of the sine graph. And I think the distance from 0 to 30 is going to be the same as the distance between the question mark and 80 degrees because the sine graph is symmetrical. So, I can do 118 minus 30, and I can get 150 degrees. We have one solution at x is 30 degrees, and another solution at x is 150 degrees. Okay? Now, that's how we would do it with a graph, but I think that's quite tricky. There is a quicker way to find these uh, repeated solutions, and that's what uh, cast diagrams are for. So, let's have a look at this. We have our sine graphs, our cos and tan graph there, and we also have this diagram on the left. These are four quadrants representing the uh, angles 0 to 90, 90 to 180, 180 to 270, and 270 to 360. This is just representing the angles, and we draw it like this. And we're going to see what the um, graphs look like in these regions. So from 0 to 90, this first quadrant, all three graphs are above 0. They are all positive. So sin, cos and tan are all positive above 0, between 0 and 90 degrees. Our next quadrant, 90 to 180, only the sine graph is positive here. The cos and tan graphs have gone negative. So we can put sine is positive in this quadrant. Our next quadrant from 180 to 270 has tan of x being positive, cos and sine are negative. So we can label this quadrant with a tan of x. Next, our final quadrant between 270 and 360 that only the cos graph is positive, sine and tan are negative. And we can label this quadrant cos of x. And this helps us predict when there will be repeated solutions for the three types of graphs. So let's see this. We have the cos graph in the bottom uh, right. We have all in the top right, sine in the top left, and tan in the bottom left. C-A-S-T. And this is how I remember uh, the order of the three, four quadrants. Three graphs in four quadrants. Cos, all, sine, tan. C-A-S-T. And all three are positive between 0 and 90. Okay. So, just to remind you what's happening here. In the first quadrant, between 0 and 90 all three graphs are positive. Now, in the second quadrant between 90 and 180, only the sine graph is positive. So if the sine graph is going to have a second solution when it's positive, it's going to have a second solution between 90 and 180. Similarly, the tan graph between 180 and 270 is positive. So if the tan graph will have a second solution to a positive answer, it will be between 180 and 270. And finally, the cos graph between 270 and 360 is positive, and therefore it will have repeated solutions in the third, fourth quadrant, 
between 270 and 360. Now let's see an example of how we can use this properly. Consider the equation 2 cos x minus 1 equals 0. Find all solutions for 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 270. So, sorry, 720. Now, 720 is twice 360. So we're going to, go, <coughs> we're going to have to go around the entire uh, cast diagram twice to do two full laps of 360. So, we start with the equation 2 cos x minus 1 equals 0. We move the 1 to the other side. 2 cos of x is equal to 1. And we divide by 2. We get cos of x is 0 0.5. We can now do inverse cos. And we do x is inverse cos of 0 0.5. We get x is 60 degrees. So there is one solution in the first quadrant between 0 and 90, which is 60 degrees, which we kind of knew because we knew the cos of x graph is positive between 0 and 90. And 0 0.5 is a positive number. So we knew there would probably be a solution in that quadrant. We knew there definitely would be. But there is a repeated solution. And the other quadrant, which has a cos being positive, because remember 0 0.5 is a positive number, so cos of x is equal to a positive number, cos of x is positive again in the cos quadrant as well. So there will be another solution down in the bottom right quadrant. And it looks like this. So we go all the way around the circle until we get to this other angle here. And the other angle is just a 60 degrees reflected downwards on the horizontal axis. And so we go around, we get 360 minus 60 degrees is 300. The next solution is at x equals 300 degrees. And again, we just did that by doing 360 minus 60 because we knew the cos graph was positive in the cos quadrant and the old quadrant. We ignored the s and t quadrants because cos is not positive in those quadrants. Now remember we are going around the uh, circle twice, so we're going to keep going. And now I've got another spiral, I'm going all the way around, and I'm going back to where it said 60 degrees before. So I go all the way around once to 360, and I keep going again another 60 degrees, and I get another solution at 420 degrees. X equals 420. And finally, we've got another solution where we go all the way around to 720, but then I subtract 60 degrees because I go back a little bit to 60 degrees. Very similar to how I did it before. And 720 minus 60 is 660 degrees. All four answers here uh, work. And they are all the solutions um, for 2 cos of x minus 1 equals 0 between 0 and 720 degrees. Now, all good mathematicians should check their answers. So what we're going to do is put one of our answers, 2 cos of 660 minus 1 equals 0, put x equals 660 into our equation. A proper mathematician will do all check all four solutions work. And when we type into our calculator, we do indeed get a zero. And I've even got a graph here that I did on Desmos to show you that those are, in fact, the four solutions to two cos of x minus one equaling to zero. Remember, the x-axis going across is where it's equal to zero. We get x is 60, x is 300, x is 420, and x is 660. Finally, I also have this here, and I will link this Desmos uh, simulation in the description below. And it helps you see uh, what we're talking about yourself and visualize the repeated solutions for sin, cause, and time yourself. Now, this is only the first video on cast diagrams. I will be doing many more. Uh, so remember to subscribe so you don't miss those future videos on cast diagrams, because there's a lot more we need to know to be able to understand it in full. But hopefully, after this video, you've understood why there are repeated solutions uh, to trigonometric equations and how you can predict them with a cast diagram. Check out the Desmos link in the description. Stay tuned and subscribe for future 
uh, cast diagram videos, and more videos to help you revise mathematics. Thanks for watching today's video from Advanced Maths. Remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. We're covering GCSE, A level, and IB maths with quick and simple explanations, and new videos are coming very soon. Check out advancedmaths.com as well for lots of free, simple revision. Thank you for watching, and good luck in your exams.